Hi, this is Steve Lee Andrews, Outlaw Bookseller, I'm contributing author to several Bloomsbury Good Reading Guides. Um, I write bits and pieces for Deep Ends, the J.G. Ballard Anthology, and I've been a bookseller for 38 years. And I thought it was probably time to do a Mick Heron video because the Apple TV series is now only about a month away in theory. And the last time I talked about Mick on the channel was um, back in November, reviewing Dolphin Junction. So I just really wanted to return to um, talk about some of Mick's earlier works and how they intersect with the Slough House series. I'll make some more points about Slough House because I think, um, you know, as time has gone on, um, when I first discovered Mick, it was about 2012 and I read Slow Horses and then Dead Lions were still only in hardcover. Um, so I was a fairly early adopter, but then of course all these authors who are overnight sensations are not. You know, Mick um, has been publishing um, for over 20 years and his first novel um, came out in 2003. So, you know, it's not an overnight success at all. And um, people are very excited about um, seeing the TV series. I'm a bit trepidatious because, and really my trepidations are around the cast and the script. Even though I really like Gary Oldman, I think he's fantastic. My first experience of Oldman was way back in about 86, 87, seeing him portraying Joe Orton, um, one of my favorite playwrights, um, in Prick Up Your Ears, a uh, film which is still not as well known as it should be, and he was superb in that, and I've sort of followed his career ever since. And obviously he was in the film version of Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy a while ago, um, as George Smiley and I have to say as much as I like Oldman I can't see him as Jackson Lamb to me I think we've all got our own vision based on mixed writing of what the characters are like and I always imagine Jackson Lamb as being rather like a cross between John Goodman from Roseanne and um, Mel Smith you know <laughs> sort of like a bad tempered version of those two combined really and um, so we've all got our own vision so I even though Oldman is you know really capable of these amazing physical transformations I'm not certain so I'm slightly trepidatious what I've seen over the years um, in my championing of Mick's books and I championed them early on and my first um, event I ran with Mick was back in 2016 and we did that again in 2018 we haven't seen each other a couple for a couple of years because of the pandemic and you know, when I, I took him up and started promoting him in the bookshop of working, he was a cult figure um, and I pushed and pushed and pushed his work and he gradually became um, a, a major cult figure in Bath, the city where I live and work. And what I've seen over the years, it's been interesting watching how the publishers have marketed the series, how they've jacketed it, what have you. And there's new jackets coming on to the, um, the Slough House books now. And you'll notice I call them the Slough House books rather than the Jackson Lamb series because very much there's a sense that when you read them from the beginning, Jackson Lamb isn't in the first couple very much and the focus is very much on River Cartwright. And I look back at a review I wrote um, of Mick's novel um, Nobody Walks um, back in, I think this must have been about when it came out in 2014. And I sort of mentioned then to me, because only there were only three um, slow house books published then when I wrote this review, that I refer to them as the River Cartwright novels. I saw River as the central character. And of course, it's an ensemble cast and it's gone out from there. So it's been interesting to see how it's evolved. Now, when I've read my first Herons, they were published by Soho Crime um, from the USA. And this is um, the Soho Crime edition of Reconstruction, which a lot of people seem to think is a singleton. I don't use the term standalone because it's a horrible conflated word. I use proper correct terminology. I'm afraid I'm a bit of a pedant about that. So people think Reconstruction is a singleton, but it's not a singleton. It features bad Sam Chapman, who pops up in the later Slough House books. And um, it is the link between the Slough House books and Mick's earlier series, the Oxford novels, featuring Zoe Boehm. Um, and I wanted to talk today about the Oxford novels and Reconstruction, because if you want to sort of plunge fully into the wonderful world of Mick Heron, um, it would be great if you step outside Slough House and challenge yourself and look at the rest of his wonderful oeuvre, because he's done some fantastic stuff. So Mick's first novel back in 2003 was Down Cemetery Road. And what I'm going to show you today are all these Soho editions. These are no longer available in the UK. There may be a few of them still out there in bookshops because John Murray reissued them a couple of years ago. And they haven't been as well distributed as, as I would have liked personally because of COVID-19. So there are four of these. They're a tetralogy. And 
um, they focus on a detective called Zoe Boehm, um, except that she isn't always present in the books in the conventional way. And the first one, which I think is a wonderful book, um, and is I do have real dilemmas because I love the Slough House books. You know, they're very funny, they're brilliantly constructed, they're exciting, the characterization is magnificent. Um, but I do really cleave to these because these are very dark and I do like dark stuff. And uh, Mick wrote in this one, my first thanks so there you go um and just to talk about the, these i'm going to read what it says on the back of this one when a house explodes in a quiet oxford suburb and a girl disappears in the aftermath sarah tucker a young married woman bored and unhappy with domestic life becomes obsessed with finding her and sarah tucker is the focus character in this and zoe is like a sidebar character and she comes increasingly into the narrative and what you get in these is you get these wonderful stories across four books um, and they are quite noir and serious there's no humor in them they're not like the slow house books so if you're going to go in with expectations and expect more of the same you're going to be disappointed if however you love mixed writing and you want to enjoy other facets what this great writer can do you will really enjoy this book and its three sequels other than the humor and the wit they're pretty much the same they have ensemble casts labyrinthine gordian not plotting um really sort of great cinematic observational writing descriptive writing which is really really good which really marks mick out i think as a stylist and they have the kind of darkness that you get in the slough house books um but they are crime novels and where i work we keep the slough house and oxford books all together in crime because they are linked they are part of a meta series or a mega series if you like but they're linked subtly and um, i'm not going to tell you how they're linked because we'll come to that a bit later on but if you haven't read these this is marvelous and where you've got a absent central character or mostly absent central character i know that seems like a strange conceit it does sort of stir the imagination and this is a fantastic book it's very important you read these in order in the same way that it's very very important that you read the slow house books in order anybody says you shouldn't is completely wrong i'll tell you how i know because if you look at reviews um online of people who haven't enjoyed um, their first slow house book it's because they've picked one up in the middle of the run they've seen a review in a paper says oh this is the one and for some reason instead of going to the first they picked it up the number of times when i've been behind the counter and i've said to people oh have you read the previous ones and they say no countless times and in reviews these are the people who haven't enjoyed the books so i then gently persuade them to buy slow horses they read it they come back and they get the rest and they're satisfied and everybody enjoys it a lot more that way so you do have to read them in order with some sort of books you don't have to with more formulaic books you don't have to but there is an unfolding narrative with slow house and with oxford and that's important continuing with oxford um there you know there really are they really are amazing books and these are the rest and i'm just going to talk through them with you now and i think just to just to have a look again um this was the second one um the last voice you hear and zoe is more present in this she's the central character and this is um about somebody who falls in front of a train and is killed and then the person's lover doesn't turn up at a funeral and you know basically she gets zoe gets drawn into this case against her or she doesn't want to and you know it's really really good and see that the title is the last voice you hear very noiry title you know they are something to do with death as Christopher Frayling said about Sergio Leone's films you know they are they are quite dark but they have these ensemble casts wonderful plotting and so he's really sort of great character and it's good to to see a very strong female character written by a man and I'm not a man so I can't tell how authentic it is but there's something really resonant and stern and yet at the same time understanding about Zoe that makes me think she is a fully rounded female character and you know I'd, have I known people like that yes I guess I have you know she's she's the real thing and then the third book in the series why we die as you say sticking with very dark titles this is fantastic about um, a gang who have robbed a jewelry shop and there's a couple of um, two um sort of two brothers who are um i seem to remember their brothers anyway who are crooks and one of them's a crossbow and there's some really dark stuff in this very very exciting indeed 
absolutely loved it. And of course, these are set in Oxford, hence the Oxford title. Um, so really, really good. And they, they bring a different sort of, you know, way of looking at the sort of dreaming spires, really. And the final novel, I'm not going to go into much detail about this at all, because this really grabbed me, Smoke and Whispers. And again, it's about um, characters. Are they present or absent or what have you? And Mick does a thing in this, which I think is really good. He does misdirection and, you know, he really does get you thinking. And there's a, there's a mystery at the heart of it beyond the mystery that's been investigated. And it rather reminded me of the very clever games that Christopher Priest, one of my favourite writers, my favourite living writer actually, plays with your perception about what is real and what isn't real. And, you know, which characters are involved and which are not absolutely fantastic so you know if you want to sort of um really step outside your comfort zone with with slow house and we all like comfort reading you know we love the books we love to see the characters you know you really must read these a true heronite must read the oxford novels so get out there pick them up um they're john murray knows the different covers and do read them in order what's interesting is that i noticed in my reading of the Slow House books, that there are echoes of things from the Oxford series. And I'm not going to talk about them in detail because I want you to discover them yourselves. So I'm not going to do spoilers. And they largely come through web-like connections in this book, Reconstruction, which I mentioned earlier. Now, I have said in another video that Reconstruction features bad Sam Chapman, who turns up, as I said also in this video, um, in the Slow House novels. And it's through reconstruction. This is the conduit. This is like sort of a stream between two lakes or where two rivers meet between Oxford and Slough House. And it moves through there. So you have to read them in order. Read the Oxford books, get them under your belt, read reconstruction. And then that kind of sets you up for Slough House. In an ideal world, I would have read them from the beginning as they came out. I really wish I'd discovered mixed works right at the beginning because I think you get more from that way. And one day I'm going to sit down and reread the lot and work through them that way. I have read some of them twice because, um, you know, he really is very clever with these web-like connections. And um, if you look on Wikipedia and various websites, it says things about Nobody Walks. I'll show you the cover of Nobody Walks now. It says that Nobody Walks is not part of the Slow House series. Um, I'm sorry, it is part of the Slough House series. It concerns itself with the park and the dogs and the peripheries, but it features Slough House characters. It introduces J.K. Coe, for example. Now, I, when I first read Nobody Walks, Nobody Walks came out um, between Real Tigers and um, Spook Street was the fourth one, wasn't it? And, you know, it was, it was great to do it that because Nobody Walks is very dark. It has an ending some people struggle with. And it appears to be a very final ending. Some people have expected a sequel to find out the fate of a certain character. That character is mentioned again as possibly still being out there um, in the world because of the work he used to do in the world of espionage. And as I say, Sam Chapman pops up um, in those later books as well. So it is a web-like thing. I don't want to tell you too much because I want you to discover the joy of these books for yourself. So what I say is that do go in with an open mind. Go in expecting ensemble casts, Gordian not plotting. Don't go in expecting humour. Expect something a little bit more serious. And of course, serious things happen in Slough House. People die. People are killed. It's all handled in this very sort of tossed off way and the gallows humour. Um, and, you know, this sort of laughable characterisation and the way that um, Lamb mocks things. But there is a seriousness at the heart of Lamb and the heart of a lot of the characters. You know, the, these, are, these are difficult lives and and, you know, these are people, obsessed people. And luckily, these people or people like them may exist in the real world. When you talk to Mick about tradecraft and the world of spies and what have you, um, he always says the same thing. I just make it up. And I'm sure he does. But he makes it up really brilliantly. So that's some more thoughts on the Oxford novels, the connections between them and Slough House, why you should really read the other books um, while you're waiting for the Apple series to come on. And when it comes on, maybe I'll do a review of that. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks to my regular subscribers. There will be more crime to come, doing a lot of psychogeography and music at the moment. Um, and there'll be lots of other great stuff. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. This is Outlaw Bookseller, signing out.